Well, let's explore the issue of frame synchronization by considering a specific example message. And that looks like a really long stream of ones and zeros, but I happen to know that these are supposed to be grouped in words of seven bits each. And when these seven bit patterns are interpreted according to the ASCII standard, or American Standard Code for Information Interchange, then it turns out that these 7-bit binary patterns look like the characters H-E-L-L-O. Giving you a little message of greeting there. So that works out pretty well, but supposing we were off by one bit. Supposing one of the bits was not available at the receiver for some reason, perhaps due to noise or, or other circumstances. Now if we just blindly interpret the bit stream as seven bit words, as I'm doing here, and then go ahead and interpret those as ASCII characters, we find that the message is radically different. Uh, in fact, we would say that the first three characters are all capitals and they bear no resemblance whatsoever to the desired message. And all of this simply because we were missing one bit. The entire message was shifted by a single bit in this case. So the idea of frame synchronization is we, we ought not to have the entire message corrupted simply because we are off by one bit for some reason. So one approach to this is the notion of frame bits. And frame bits give us inf extra information to tell where a given word or a grouping of bits begins and ends. So we'll go ahead and follow the standard that we insert a zero at the beginning, we call it the start bit, and insert a one at the end, that's the stop bit. Now before I continue on this, I'll also point out that typically uh, a much more common word size would be eight bits instead of seven. So I'm going to introduce an extra zero here and let me now go ahead and apply the extra zeros as well as the framing bits to the rest of the message. Now unfortunately the bits are not color coded at the receiver end and in fact at, from the receiver's point of view you simply have ones and zeros. So if, if you don't really know where the beginning of the message occurs, especially if we're saying that the message is after the alternating ones and zeros of the preamble, how do we know what is actually a start bit? Well, the ones and zeros also go by the names mark and space. And so this so-called steady mark region will be an area of a long string of ones just before the message. So the nice thing here is the alternating ones and zeros wake up the bit sync system. The long string of mark symbols means that now we can figure out when, or we can easily now detect the first time that we see a zero, that's going to be the start bit. And from that point onwards, we're in pretty good shape for confirming that we saw a valid stop bit or one. You see another start bit grab the eight bits as your first and second bytes and so on. Now two considerations here. The alternating ones and zero region has to be long enough to ensure that the bandpass filter in our bit sync system starts up, but the steady mark region has two points as well. It needs to be sufficiently long enough to allow easy detection of that first start bit or the, the first time that we see a zero, but it also needs to be short enough for the bandpass filter to continue oscillation. So remember that the bandpass filter works best when it's being uh, pumped or excited by an alternating series of ones and zeros. And as long as the steady mark region is not too long, then the bandpass filter will be able to continue generating oscillations.